Welcome back to my complete TART course for beginners and beyond. This video contains the second chapter of this course and I've decided to share this for free here on YouTube. And if you're serious about learning DART, you should consider buying my full course on Udemy. This will include over 8 hours of content and comes with premium support as well as a complete reference ebook about DART. And you can buy the full course for a discounted price by typing this URL in your browser. Ok, so let's get started. In this section we will learn all about the basics of the Dart language. This specific section is for absolute beginners and this means that you can follow it even if you've never written a single line of code. As part of this we will cover some fundamental concepts such as variables and basic types, the difference between initialization and assignment, as well as working with strings and numeric types and the various operators that are available in Dart. The goal of this is that by the end of this section you will be able to write simple programs in Dart. And to help you along with this you will find some exercises to practice what you have learned along the way. And while this is a course about Dart, most of the concepts that we will learn in this section are identical in other programming languages. So if you are already familiar with other languages, feel free to skip some of the lessons and jump to the next section where we will cover the Dart type system in detail. Ok, so let's get started. Alright, so let's get started and write our first Dart program. And since we are going to start from scratch, here we can delete everything. So now we have an empty program and if we try to run this, we can see that we get a console error telling us that the program couldn't be compiled to JavaScript because the main method could not be found. So the important thing to understand here is that a Dart program is only valid if it contains something called a main method. And the main method is also known as the entry point of your program. So let's define it. And over here we can type void main, all in lowercase, and then open and close parentheses, and then we need to add open and close curly braces, and we are going to add a new line in here, because this is where we will start writing some code for our program. Now, if you don't fully understand this syntax just yet, don't worry. The important thing to remember here is that all Dart programs need to have a main method and this is how we can create it. And now that we added this, we can run our program once again and this time the console log is empty. And this is a good thing because it means that there are no errors. But since this program doesn't do anything, then nothing is printed here. So let's continue on the next lesson where we will make this program a bit more interesting. Now that we added the main method, we are ready to write our first program. And to do that, we are going to add some code inside these curly braces. So over here, we are going to type print all in lowercase, and then we can open and close parentheses. And inside here, we can add a pair of single quotation marks, and we can type hello world like this. And as we can see, here we get an error telling us that Dart expected to find a semicolon on line 3. So let's add this at the end of the line and our program is now valid. And if we press the run button, we can see that hello world is printed on the console. So what we have here is a so-called print statement. And if we move our cursor here, we can see that some documentation pops up telling us that we can use this to print a string representation of the object to the console. And this is exactly what happens when we run this program. Ok, so let's add another print statement. So here we can type print and then inside single quotes we can type I like learning. And we are going to add a semicolon at the end just like we did before. And if we run this code we get hello world and I like learning in the same order as we specified in our program. In fact, when we write programs like this, all code is executed line by line from top to bottom. By the way, you may have noticed that these two statements that I've added here don't start at the beginning of the line and instead they are indented inside the main method. This is a convention that is adopted by most programming languages and it helps to see how the code is nested inside methods. So this convention is enforced by the Dart formatter and in fact if we remove the extra spaces this code will still work. But if we press the format button over here we can see that the indentation is restored. So let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson we are going to learn about variables. So let's remove these statements and run the program to clear the console output. 
and here I'm going to type some code and then I'm going to explain it. So I can type string with a capital S like this and then name equals and then in single quotes I'm going to type in Andrea and then a semicolon at the end and then I'm going to print name like this. So we can quickly try this and press on the run button and we can see that the console now says Andrea. So how does this code work? The main idea here is that we are defining a variable which contains my name and whenever we want to use this name we can reference it by using this variable. So what happens when we define a variable is that some memory will be allocated inside our system and to access the value that is stored in memory we can use the variable name. So when we print name what happens is that our program will retrieve the value that this variable points to and it will print it to console. So you can think of a variable as a box that contains one item and you can have as many boxes or variables as you want as long as you give them different names. So being able to reference variable by name is very useful. So let's try to understand the code that we have written a little bit better. And the line that we have written can be divided into two parts. On the left we have our variable declaration and when we declare a variable we need to give it a type and in this case we are using a string because we want to represent the letters in my name. After this we can choose the variable name and after we have declared our variable we can initialize it. To do this we use this assignment operator and here we have a string literal which represents the value that we want to store in our variable. And as we have seen before, we need to add a semicolon, which is also known as a terminator. Now, this may seem like a simple expression, but it is a good example that shows how we can declare and initialize a variable. So, what is the difference between variable declaration and variable initialization? Well, as the name says, variable declaration is the process of defining a variable and giving it a name so that it can be used later. And variable initialization is the process of assigning an initial value to that variable. By the way, you should know that there are some rules about what is and isn't a valid variable name. Valid variable names can include a combination of lowercase and uppercase letters as well as all digits from 0 to 9 and the underscore character, like this. However, the first character of a variable name cannot be a digit. And you will get an error if you try to write this. Also, when writing Dart code, all variables should follow the camel case naming convention. This means that you should always use lowercase letters and each new word inside the variable name should have a capital letter apart from the first one. This improves the style of your code and makes it consistent with code from other developers. Okay, so let's rename this variable to name for now and we can continue on the next lesson. In the last lesson we have learned how to declare this variable and because we wanted to print my name we have used the string type but in Dart there are some other basic types that you should know about and these basic types are int, double and bool. So let's see how to use them. Over here I can type a new line and we can write int age equals 36. So in this case we are declaring a variable named age and this variable has type int and it is initialized with a literal integer value 36. And like we said before we can reference a variable by name. So if we want we can add this statement to print my age like this. And if we run our program the console log will print Andrea and then 36. So we can use int to represent all positive and negative integer values with up to 64 bits of precision. Next, let's look at floating point numbers. So here we can type double height equals 1.84, which is my height in meters. And double is the type that we use to represent 64 bit floating point numbers, which may have a fractional part. 64-bit floating point numbers are said to have double precision as opposed to 32 bits and for this reason this type is called double. Next, let's define a new variable of type bool and I'm going to call this likes dart equals true. And bool is a type that we can use to express only two possible values, true and false. So string 
int, double and bool are known as built-in types in the Dart language and you'll be using them extensively. By the way, one thing that I'd like to point out is that Dart is a case-sensitive language. This means that writing false in lowercase is not the same as writing false with a capital letter. In fact, if we try this, we get an error telling us that false is undefined. Equally, here we have defined the age variable to be all lowercase. As a result, if we try to print age with a capital A, Dart won't be happy and it will tell us that age is undefined. So always keep in mind that Dart is case sensitive and write your code accordingly. By the way, up until now we have always created variables by specifying their type explicitly using string, int, double and bool. And we will continue to do this in the rest of this section. But just so you know, later in the course we will talk about type inference and learn that there is another way of declaring variables without specifying their type like this. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. Ok, so it's time for our first exercise and what I'd like you to do is to create some variables to define my first name, last name, age and height and initialize them with these values. And I'd like you to print all these variables to console so that the output looks like this. So you can pause the video now and try this by yourself. Ok, so let's see how to solve this exercise and as we said we want to define my first and last name as well as my age and height. To do this we'll need 4 variables and 4 print statements. And we can reuse some of the code from the last lesson. So here we can remove this boolean variable and then we can rename this variable to first name like this. And then here we can add string last name equals and then we need single quotes bit sotto like this and then we can print the first name, we can print the last name, we can print the age and we can print the height. And if we run this code we can see 4 lines with the values of these variables. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. In the previous exercise we have seen how to print multiple variables to console. But sometimes we don't want to print things line by line and instead we want to combine variables together into a single string. For example, it would be nice if we could print a sentence that says My name is Andrea, I'm 36 years old and I'm 1.84 meters tall. So let's see how we can do this using the variables that we have already defined. By the way, we can use single or double quotes to represent a string literal. So in this case we will use double quotes. So let's remove all these statements and then we can add print and then within double quotes my name is and then we need to find a way to append the first name variable to this string. Now there are two ways of doing this which are known as string concatenation and string interpolation. So let's see how they work starting with string concatenation. To concatenate two strings we can use the plus sign, like this, plus first name. And if we run this code we can see that it works just fine. And because we can concatenate as many strings as we want, here we could add plus and then within double quotes a space so that we can separate the first name and the last name and then plus last name, like this. And if we run this, the console log will show both my name and surname. But as you can see, this syntax is quite verbose and it quickly becomes hard to read if you have to concatenate many strings. To solve this problem, Dart supports string interpolation. So let me show you how this works. So here I can copy and paste this line and then I can replace all the concatenation code with dollar first name and then space and then dollar last name and a quotation mark at the end. So when we insert a dollar followed by a variable inside a string, we are telling Dart to take the value that the variable holds and insert it at this position in the string. And if we run this code, we can see that the console shows my name is Andrea Bizzotto two times. And while both these print statements produce the same result, we can all agree that this syntax is more concise and easier to read. And when we write code, we should always aim to make it not just correct, but easy to understand. 
and when creating strings from multiple variables, string interpolation gives us just a convenient way of doing this. So we can delete this line and here we can continue with our sentence and add I'm dollar age years old and I'm dollar height meters tall. And if we run this program now, we can see that we get the result that we want. Now, let's suppose that I want to print what my age will be next year. To do that, I can add a new print statement and this could say next year I will be dollar age plus one years old. Now, if we run this code, the console will say that next year I will be 36 plus one years old. And while this is technically correct, it is not exactly what we wanted to print. So our goal here is to first take my age and then add one to it and then interpolate the result inside this string. But if we write code like this, Dart will only interpolate the variable that immediately follows the dollar sign. To get the result that we want, we can use a pair of curly braces to surround the expression that we want to interpolate. And as you can see, the syntax highlighter now shows age plus one with a different color to indicate that it is an expression. And now we can run this code and the result looks much better. So the key takeaway here is that if you want to evaluate an expression inside a string, you can use this syntax and put it inside curly braces after the dollar sign. By the way, this is the first arithmetic expression that we see in this course and we will talk about expressions more in detail a bit later. Also, you may need to use curly braces in other cases. For example, here we could define the current temperature as 30 degrees and I could print this by typing dollar temp like this and here I could add a space and then capital C for Celsius. But if I wanted to print this without the space, Dart interprets temp C as the name of a variable which doesn't exist. So to make this code work, here I need to use curly braces like this. So these examples should clarify how you can use string interpolation with variables and expressions. Okay, so we can clear all this code and continue on the next lesson. It's now time for an exercise about string interpolation. So what I'd like you to do in this exercise is to add all these variables to a new program and then you should use some print statements to produce these three lines in the console log and the output should update correctly if you change the values of the variables. For example, if you change this value to 3, then the program should print 3 plus 3 makes 6. So you can pause the video now and try to solve this. Okay, so let's see how to accomplish this. Here I have a program with the four variables from the exercise and I've also included the desired output as a comment. We'll talk about comments in detail later on in this section, but for now just keep in mind that comments are not executed as part of your program and you can add a comment with two slashes at the beginning of a line, like this. Okay, so to print the temperature I can write this line, making sure to use curly braces when interpolating the temperature variable. Next, let's see how to print this sentence. And in this case I'm going to interpolate the value variable here and here and to produce the result I'm interpolating an expression which is equal to value plus value like this. So if I run this I get 2 plus 2 makes 4 but if I change this value to 1 and run again then this time I get 1 plus 1 makes 2. And for the last sentence I need to type print I like pizza and pasta using string interpolation and if I change this string literal to pizza with olives and run the program then I can see that the output is correct. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. In the last lesson we have become a bit more familiar with strings, so I'd like to talk a bit more about various ways of representing strings in Dart. As we can see here, I have used single quotes to define my first and last name. And we used double quotes inside this print statement. And as I said before, we can use either single or double quotes when defining strings. To illustrate why there are two ways of doing this, let me remove all this code and show you an example. So here I can print this sentence using single quotes. Today 
I'm feeling great. And as you can see, here I'm getting a lot of errors. The reason for this is that I've chosen to use single quotes as the string delimiters, but because I have a single quote in the middle of the string, then Dart thinks this is the end of the string, and what follows becomes invalid syntax. So one way of fixing this is to use double quotes so that Dart doesn't get confused. So let me copy paste this line, and if I use double quotes as the limiters for this string, then this syntax is valid. But another way of fixing this code is to use a backslash right before the single quote inside this string. So this syntax will tell Dart that we really mean this character to be part of the string, and this code is valid again. So what we have just done is known as string escaping, which is done by adding an escape character in front of a special character, like a single quote. And as a result, both statements will produce the same output. Now, since backslash is a special character itself, if you want to use backslash inside a string, you had to escape it as well. And this will produce a single backslash on the console log. Also, if you want to print the dollar symbol, you had to escape this as well, because it is otherwise reserved for string interpolation. So this syntax will produce a single dollar on the console. So string escaping is very useful whenever we want to print special characters, but there are some strings that contain a lot of special characters. For example, on Windows, file paths are represented using backslashes, so this is a typical path that represents the system directory on Windows. And as you can see, we need to escape each backslash in this string, and this can quickly become tedious. To work around that, Dart also supports a special kind of string literal called a row string. To represent that, we need to add a lowercase r before the string delimiter, and when we do this, we no longer need to escape any special characters. And if we run this program, we can see that the string is printed correctly. So this syntax is not very common, but you should know that it exists, so that you can use it when needed. In any case, if you are wondering whether you should prefer single or double quotes in Dart, I can say that a lot of the Dart code that you can find online uses single quotes, and this applies to the Flutter SDK as well. So my advice would be to use single quotes, but the most important thing is to be consistent, as this will improve the style of your code. Before we continue, I have a little quiz for you. So here it goes. Can you guess what is the output of this code without running it? And you can pause the video here and try to answer. Okay, so let's figure this out. I have copied this code in Dartpad, and if we run it, we get $10, A, and $10. And why is this? Well, the first line just uses string interpolation to print the value of A. The second line uses the escape character for the dollar sign. As a result, a dollar sign is printed, followed by the letter A. The third line prints a dollar sign, just like in the previous case, but this is then followed by another dollar sign, and this is used to interpolate the value of A. So the result is $10. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. Now that we know how to work with single and double quotes with strings, let's talk about multi-line strings. In this example, I'm printing three separate strings, like this. But sometimes it's useful to represent multiple lines inside a single string. One way of doing that would be to keep all three strings inside a single print statement, and write code like this. Now, this is valid code, but if we try to run it, we can see that all the strings have been folded inside one long line. Instead, we would like to have a new line at the end of each string. And one way of doing this is to use a new line special character, which can be defined with the backslash n syntax, like this. So we can add a new line for each string, like this. And if we print this, we can see that the strings now are printed on three separate lines again. So this works, but if you have a lot of strings, it becomes tedious to add this new line character at the end of each string. Instead, you can use the multi-line syntax, which works by defining a string with three double quotes at the beginning and three double quotes at the end, like this. And then inside here, we can add as much text as we want. 
As a proof that this works, I can delete this code. And if I run this again, I can see that the output is the same. And not only we can do this, but if we want, we can assign the whole multi-line string to a variable and then print it separately. So this is how multi-line strings work and they can be quite useful if you want to hard code long chunks of text in your programs. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. Now that we have learned about strings and string interpolation, I'm going to show you some common operations that you're likely to need when working with strings. So in this lesson, we will see how to get the lowercase and uppercase version of a string. And after that, we'll learn how to perform find and replace operations on strings. So let's start by declaring a string title and within single quotes, dart course like this. And then we can print the title and if we run this program, we get this output on the console. So let's see how we can print this title, but only using uppercase characters. To do this, we can locate the end of the title variable over here, and then we can type dot. And as you can see, Dart shows us a list of operations that we can do with this variable. So if we declare a string variable, then these are all the things that we can do with it. As we said, we want to get the uppercase version of this string. So after the dot, we can type two, and we can see that Dart can autocomplete this code for us. So if we choose two uppercase and press enter, Dart will automatically complete this line. And what we have here is an expression that takes the contents of the title string and converts all characters to uppercase. So we can run this code, and the console log shows Dart course all in capital letters. Now, let's look at this expression more in detail. We already know that title is a variable of type string, but what does the two uppercase syntax represent? Two uppercase is known as a method, and you can think of methods as operations that perform some logic with a given variable or object. So in this case, we have a variable or object on the left, and we can use the dot operator to call a method that does something with that variable. In this case, return the uppercase version of it. So the key thing to remember here is that methods are applied to an object using the dot operator and they use parentheses. By the way, this print statement here also has parentheses, but it's not applied to an object using the dot notation. And in programming, you often hear people call this a method as well. But strictly speaking, print is not a method, but a function. So for now, don't worry too much about this, as we will talk in detail about methods and functions later on in this course. Okay, so let's get back on track. And I'd like to point out that this method can be used with all strings. And that includes both string variables and string literals. In other words, if we wanted, we could choose to apply this method to this string literal. To do this, we can cut this code from here and paste it here, like this. As a result, the title string variable is initialized with the uppercase version of Dart course. And so we can print the title directly like this. And if we run this code, we can see that this value still has all uppercase characters. Once again, this code is valid because when we apply the to uppercase method to a string literal, this entire expression is still a string that can be assigned to this variable. So this is how we can uppercase a string and lowercasing is just as easy because all we have to do is to type dot to lowercase instead. And if we run this, we can see that the text in the console log now becomes all lowercase. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. In the last lesson, we have learned how to uppercase and lowercase strings, and we have seen that we can apply the to lowercase method to a string variable like this, or directly to a string literal when the variable is initialized. However, if we want, we can also modify the contents of this variable after it has been initialized. What I mean by this is that here I can remove this method call, and after the print statement, I can type title equals title dot to lowercase, like this. Then we can print the title once again. And if we run this program, we get the original title printed once, and then we get another line with the title in lowercase letters. And the reason for this is that by the time we get to the first print statement, the title variable holds this string literal. So this is what is printed. 
but after that we reassign this variable with the result of this expression. So what we are saying here is, hey Dart, take this title variable that already contains a value and give it a new value from here onwards. And as a result, when we print this variable again, then the console log shows the lowercase version of it. And the important thing to understand here is the difference between this line and this line. Over here, we are declaring and initializing a variable for the first time. And once a variable is declared, we can use it again. But here we are taking a variable that is already declared and we are giving it a new value. And this step is called variable assignment, which is a different concept. And you can only ever assign a variable after it has been declared. This means that it's illegal to write code like this. And this won't work because title has not yet been defined when we reach this line. Okay, so let's remove this line and continue on the next lesson. Okay, so it's time for an exercise and what I'd like you to do is to define a string variable called title and initialized to Dart course and you should write a program that produces the following output. So you can pause the video here and try to solve this by yourself. Okay, so let's see how to solve this. And the key to this is to reuse the same variable while assigning multiple values to it. So we can start with this and we can print the variable to get the first line. And then we can add the code for the uppercase version. So here we can write title equals title dot to uppercase like this. And then we can print the variable again. And finally, we can write title equals title dot to lowercase like this. And then we can print it once again. And if we run this, we can see that the console output is what we expect. So let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to check if a string contains a certain substring or pattern. And we'll also see how to replace contents inside a string. So let's start with a simple line that assigns this string literal to a string variable. And next, we want to check if this string contains the word pizza. To do that, we can type print, and then inside it, we can add love pizza dot contains. And contains is a method that takes a string representing the word or value that we are searching for. So here I can type pizza, in single quotes and add a semicolon at the end and if we run this we can see that the console log prints true. Now this syntax defines an expression that takes the contents of this variable and checks if it contains the value pizza inside it and the result of this expression will be a boolean variable that is either true or false. So in this case, we are evaluating this expression inside the print statement. But if we wanted, we could have also declared a bool contains pizza equals love pizza dot contains pizza like this. And then we could print the contains pizza variable. And this would lead to exactly the same result. So just keep in mind that expressions can always be assigned to variables or passed directly to functions like print. Okay, so let's clear these two lines. And as a next step, we want to find a way to replace pizza with pasta using this string variable. To do that, we can type string love pasta equals love pizza dot replace all. And this method takes two arguments, which are the string value that we want to replace in the original string and the string value that we should replace it with. So here I can type pizza inside single quotes and then pasta inside single quotes as well. And note how I've used a comma to separate these two arguments. So whenever you use methods that take more than one argument, you can use a comma to separate them. Okay, so let's carry on. And here we can type print love pasta. And if we run this program, we can see that the output now says I love pasta. By the way, I'd like to point out that here I have decided to assign the result of this expression to a new variable called love pasta. But if I wanted, I could have chosen not to do this and instead just reassign the love pizza variable like this. However, writing code like this is slightly misleading because the way this variable is named would lead us to think that the variable contains pizza inside it. 
So if we do choose to replace pizza with pasta, I think we should either assign this expression to a new variable or perhaps choose a different variable name here. And maybe we should call this food preference. And then we could reassign this variable here and print it here. Of course, this is just a simple program. But the key takeaway here is to always choose variable names that are meaningful based on the values they contain, as this will help other developers to better understand your code. Ok, so we have now covered the basics of working with strings in Dart, but there is much more that you can do with strings. As we have seen, there are a lot of different methods that you can use to manipulate strings. So if you want to get more familiar with them, I encourage you to try them out on your own. And if you click on a method that you are using, Dart will show you the documentation so that you can learn more about it. By the way, the string operations that we have just learned are useful in a lot of real world applications. For example, you may be writing a chat application and you need to remove or replace any offensive words from your user's messages. To do this, you would keep a list of words that may be considered offensive and every time a new message is sent, you would scan it and remove all offensive words from your list using the replace all method. And we will learn more about how to work with lists later on, but for now, I just wanted to give you an example of where you may use replace all. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, I want to talk about how we can convert between variables of different types. So let's start with an empty program, and here we can add an int age equals 36. And we would like to see if we can convert this variable to a string. To do that, we could try to type string age string equals age, like this. But as we can see, Dart tells us that a variable of type int can't be assigned to a variable of type string. This kind of makes sense because age is an integer while string is a collection of characters. And because Dart is a strongly typed language, we are not allowed to directly assign an int value to a string variable. Instead, we need to use a method that can convert this expression to a string. In other words, here we can type dot and Dartpad is already suggesting a couple of methods that return a value of type string. So here we can choose to string and press enter, and this makes the compiler happy. And the same concept applies to variables of type double. For example, here I could type double height equals 1.84, and I could convert this in the same way. So here I could add string height string equals height. And again, I can choose to use toString, for example. Not only that, but there are some variants of the toString method that we can use to choose how we want this string to be formatted. For example, here we could choose toString as fixed with a value of 1, like this. And if we print this variable and run the program, we can see that the console shows 1.8 with just one decimal place. So to string as fixed is quite useful if you add numbers with a lot of fractional digits and you want to limit how many are printed on the console. Next, let's look at the opposite conversion, where we have a string and we want to convert it to an int or a double. For example, here we could have a string rating string equals, and then within single quotes, 4.5 like this, and in this case the syntax is a bit different, because if we want to convert a string to a double, we should type double dot parse, and then we can pass in the input string, like this. And the reason this syntax is different is that not all strings can be converted to a number like an int or a double. For example, here we could add this string, which cannot be converted to a number, and if we try to print this, using double dot parse like this and try to run the program, then this time we don't get a console log for this line. And that's because when this program is executed, it generates an exception when it reaches this line and the execution is aborted. And we will look at error and exception handling later on in this course. But for now, keep in mind that you can only successfully parse a string value to a double if that string contains a valid numeric value. Next, let's clear this code and talk about converting integers to doubles and vice versa. So here is an integer value, 
and in Dart it's invalid to assign an int variable directly to a double variable and if we do so we get an error like this. So if you want this to work you have to use the to double method. On the other hand you can always declare a double variable and assign it with an integer literal and that's because Dart lets you promote integer literals to double. So assigning integer literals to doubles is okay, but assigning integer variables to double variables is only possible with the to double method. On the other hand, you can't declare a variable of type int and assign it with a literal of type double like this. And instead, you should choose to use either floor, round, seal or truncate, depending on which specific conversion you need. For example, here I could choose round and if I print this value and run this program, the console log will show 41. So I encourage you to experiment with the various conversion methods to better understand how they work. So let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson and the upcoming ones, we are going to learn about various groups of operators that are available when working with expressions in Dart. And a lot of these operators are identical or very similar in other languages, so I think it's worthwhile to cover them in detail. And in this lesson, we will focus on arithmetic operations, augmented assignment and operator precedence in Dart. And to get started, we can use our friendly print statement and try to print the result of different expressions. So here we can type print and for example 5 plus 2, like this. And if we run this program, we get 7 on the console. Similarly, we could change this operator to minus and the result would be 3. If we want to multiply two numbers, we can use the multiplication operator, like this. And in this case, we would see the number 10 on the console. And if we want to divide 5 by 2, we can use the division operator. And if we run this code, we get 2.5, which is the floating point result of this operation. And if we want to calculate the integer division between two numbers, we need to use the integer division operator, which is represented by a tilde and a forward slash, like this. And in this case, the result will be 2. And while we talk about integers, we should also cover the modulo operator that we can use to get the remainder of the integer division. And in this case, the result is going to be number 1. Now, one useful thing to keep in mind is that all these operators have a corresponding augmented assignment operator. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we want, here we can declare int x equals 5, and then we could type x equals x plus 2. And if we print x at this stage and run this program, we get the number 7. But there is also a shorter version of this syntax, which looks like this. So we can type x plus equal 2. So these two expressions do exactly the same thing, but this second version is much more concise. The augmented assignment operator works with addition, subtraction and multiplication, as well as floating point division. Though keep in mind that this syntax only works if x is of type double, like this. And you can also use integer division, and in this case x should be of type int. And finally, you also have the augmented modulo operator, which looks like this. So the takeaway here is that in Dart, you can use various arithmetic operators, and you also have an augmented assignment variant for each one of them. Next, let's talk about operator precedence, and let's consider this statement. Print 10 minus 2 times 3, like this. So when we write an expression like this, Dart will evaluate it according to the relative precedence between the different operators. So if we run this code, we find that the result is 4. And that's because the multiplication operator has precedence over the subtraction operator. However, if we wanted instead to first compute 10 minus 2 and then multiply the result by 3, we should use parentheses to express our intent. And in this case, the result would be 24. So in most cases, you will find that the default precedence is appropriate, but keep in mind that you can use parentheses to change the order of operations. Okay, so it's time to do a new exercise, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this exercise, we are going to solve a simple temperature conversion problem, and depending on where you live, you may be used to measuring temperature in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. 
So given the following variable representing a temperature in Fahrenheit, you should write a program to convert the temperature to Celsius using this formula. Then you should print the result and the output of this program should be 86F equals 30C. As a bonus, the converted temperature in Celsius should show at most one fractional digit. Ok, so you can pause the video now and try to write this program. Ok, so let's see how to solve this. To start off, we have a variable representing the temperature in Fahrenheit and we can use this formula to convert this to Celsius. So over here we can type double temp Celsius equals and then within parentheses temp Fahrenheit minus 32 and then divided by 1.8 like this. And then we need to print this so we can type print and then within single quotes I'm going to use string interpolation and curly braces and type temp Fahrenheit and then I want a capital F right after the temperature and then equals and then again dollar curly braces temp Celsius and then capital C like this and if I run this program I can see that the console log is correct so this works well for this specific temperature input but if I change this value to something like 90 and run the program once again, I can see that the output has many fractional digits. And if you remember, when we talked about conversions between types, we said that we can control this with a specific method called toString as fixed. And we can pass 1 as an argument. So if we run this now, we can see that the output looks better. And by the way, I think it would be also a good idea to apply this method to the temperature in Fahrenheit, like this. So if we want, we can now change this variable to 90.25, like this. And if we run the program, we can see that now both temperatures are printed with just one fractional digit. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson we'll talk about the increment and decrement operators. So let's start with an integer variable like this. And as we have seen before we can use the augmented assignment operator to increase the value of x by 1. In addition to this Dart offers an even more concise way of incrementing and decrementing variables and this works by typing x++. So this statement increments the value of x and is more concise than the augmented assignment operator. So we can remove this and if we print x and we execute our program, we can see that the result in the console is 2. Similarly, we can decrement x by typing x minus minus. So these are known as the postfix increment and decrement operators. And in Dart, we can also type plus plus x and minus minus x. So let's focus on the increment operators only and to better understand the difference between x++ and x++x let's assign this expression to a new integer value called y and remove this line and then we can print both x and y with this syntax using string interpolation. So if we use the postfix increment operator we see that x is 2 and y is 1 but if we update this expression to use the prefix increment operator we can see that both x and y are equal to 2. In summary when we use the postfix increment operator this entire expression returns the value of x and assigns it to y before the increment takes place and then increments the value of x. On the other hand, when we use the prefix increment operator, we first increment x and then we assign this value to the y variable. Now, you might be wondering why things work this way and all I can answer is that most of the languages that belong to the C family have adopted this convention over the last 50 years. So in this respect, Dart works exactly in the same way as many other languages. And since increment and decrement operators can be a bit tricky the first time you see them, I have prepared a quiz for you. So here it goes. Can you guess what values will be printed if we run this program? So you can pause the video and try to figure this out without running the code. Ok, so let's run this code and as we can see x is 2, y is 0 and z is 0. So why is that? Well, x is initialized to 1 and by the time we reach the print statement it has been incremented to 2. 
y is initialized to 1 because the result of this expression is the value of x before it is incremented and z is initialized to 0 because the result of this expression is the value of y after it has been decremented from 1 to 0. Okay, so this wraps up increment and decrement operators in Dart and my advice with these operators is that you can use them to make your code more concise but try not to use them inside expressions because you want your code to be easy to understand by other developers. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, we'll take a look at logical and relational operators in Dart. Relational operators are used to make comparisons between expressions and they all have one thing in common and that is that they return a boolean value as a result. This makes them well suited for writing conditional logic so that you can execute some code only when a certain condition is true. So in this lesson, I'll give you an overview about these operators and we'll see how to use them to do something useful later on when we talk about control flow in Dart. Okay, so let's start with an example showing the various relational operators with some comments to indicate what they represent. And as you can see, here I'm comparing 5 and 2 using all these different operators. And if I run this program, I get either true or false depending on the result of each comparison. Now, 5 and 2 are both integer literals, but you can use any expressions you like and mix variables and literals, provided that both the left and right side of the comparison are compatible. And what I mean by compatible is that you can compare an integer to a double because they are both numbers, but you can't compare a number to a string because relational operators are not defined between these two types. Okay, so this is how you can compare expressions, but sometimes you need to compare multiple expressions in one go. And for that, you can use the logical operators. For example, here you could write print and then five less than two or five less than seven. So this is known as the logical or operator and the result of this expression will be true if either five is less than two or five is less than seven. Similarly, you can use the logical AND operator, which is represented like this, and the result of this expression will be true if 5 is less than 2 and 5 is less than 7. In any case, you should keep in mind that relational operators have precedence over logical operators, and this means that you don't need to use parentheses here. However, you may have a more complex expression, like this. And you can use parentheses if you intend to evaluate this expression first and then compute the logical end with the result of this expression. In addition to all these operators, you can also use the NOT operator, which takes the result of an expression and negates it. For example, here we can print and then 5 less than 2, like this, and we can put a NOT operator in front of this expression. And if we run this program, we see that this returns true because this expression evaluates to false. By the way, let me show you a more interesting example that we could use to perform a basic email validation check. So here I have declared an email string variable and then I could print email dot is not empty and email dot contains. And here I can add a at symbol like this. As you can see, in this case, we are not working with numbers, but as long as the expressions on each side of the AND operator evaluate to a Boolean value, then this syntax is valid. Okay, so this is the end of this lesson on relational and logical operators. So you can spend a bit of time getting more familiar with them. And in any case, we'll use them more in detail later on in the section about control flow. So let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the conditional operator, which is also often called the ternary operator, because it is composed by three parts. The ternary operator works by using this syntax. On the left, we have an expression or condition which evaluates to either true or false. Then we have a question mark followed by another expression, which is returned if the condition on the left evaluates to true. And then we have a colon followed by another expression, which is returned if the condition on the left evaluates to false. 
So when we use this syntax, this entire expression will be evaluated according to these rules. And because this whole thing is an expression, we can use it, for example, by assigning it to a new variable. So let's see a concrete example of this. Over here, we have an empty program and we could type int age equals 36. And then we could declare a string type equals age greater than 16 and then question mark adult and then column child like this and as you can see these are both string literals and then we can print the type like this and if we run this program we can see that the console prints adult but if we change the age to 10 over here and we run the program again then this time the console prints child so once again, this entire expression will return the adult or child string literal depending on the result of this condition. So this is how the conditional operator works. And by the way, you should make sure that both these expressions return values of the same type. And as you can see, these are both string literals and we assign the result of this expression to a variable of type string. Similarly, you must make sure that this expression is of type bool. For example, if I try to use an int, you can see that Dart generates a compile time error. Once again, to use the conditional operator, this should be a boolean expression. So this is how the conditional operator works and we will see some more practical examples of this when we talk about control flow later on in this course. Ok, so let's continue on the next lesson. In this lesson, I want to talk about the hex notation, as well as the bitwise and shifting operators in Dart. And before I continue, I should mention that you should have some knowledge of Boolean algebra and bit manipulation to understand this content. Alright, so up until now we have written integer numbers using a base 10 notation, which uses all digits from 0 to 9. But in some cases, it's more useful to work with the hex or base 16 notation, which uses all digits from 0 to 9 and the letters from A to F. In Dart, we can define an integer literal with the hex notation by writing 0x followed by a sequence of digits in hex format. For example, we could write 0xA to represent the number 10, or we can write 0x10 to represent the number 16 or 0x100 to represent the number 256, which is the square of 16. So when are hex numbers useful? One place where you may encounter them is when defining colors in ARGB format. For example, we could define the color green as 0x ff 0 ff 0 where ff is the alpha channel, 00 is the red channel, ff is the green channel, and 00 is the blue channel. By using this format, it is easier to work with ARGB colors because each component is identified by its position and uses two digits. And since we can now express numbers in hex format, we can also take a look at how we can manipulate them with bitwise operators. For example, we could declare int x equals 0 x f 0, which corresponds to this number in binary, and int y equals 0 x 0 f which corresponds to this number in binary and then we could print the result of the bitwise or between these two numbers and if we run this program we get 255 on the console which is the decimal representation of this number but if we want we can print the result in hex format as well to do that we can add some parentheses here and then we can type 2 radix string with base 16 like this and if we run this now, we can see that we get ff on the console, or we can use the base 2. And if we run this, we get all ones. Similarly, we could print the result of the bitwise end operator. And if we run this, we are going to get 0, because all bits are reset to 0. And if we want, we can even use the bitwise exclusive or operator, which looks like this. And the result of this is also going to be all ones. Finally, I should mention the bitwise not operator, which we can use by writing a tilde in front of an integer expression. So if we run this, we get a list of bits that are all set to 1, followed by 4 bits set to 0. And this is the negated version of this binary number. 
Before we move on, we can also cover the shifting operators. So let me delete some code like this and then given a variable x equals to 4, which corresponds to this number in binary, we can shift all the bits of x to the right by 1 and print the result. And this is equivalent to dividing x by 2. Or if we want, we can left shift x by 2 and this is equivalent to multiplying x by 4. So this is how the bitwise and shifting operators work. So I encourage you to play with them a little bit and get more familiar with bit manipulation. And you can use this method to print numbers in base 2, 10 or 16 as needed. And this wraps up our overview of these groups of operators in Dart. By the way, I'd like to mention that just like we have augmented assignment variants for the arithmetic operators, you can also use augmented assignment with the bitwise and shifting operators. Also, there are other operators that we haven't covered just yet, but we'll get to those once we have introduced a few more concepts in this course. Okay, so let's continue on the next lesson. There is one basic feature of the Dart language that we have not covered just yet. And that's because this feature doesn't affect in any way the behavior of your programs. However, it is very valuable and useful to people that need to read our code. And that feature is comments. So what is a comment? A comment is a block of text or code that is ignored by the compiler. Comments are normally used to document our code so that others can more easily understand it. So in this lesson, we'll learn about single and multi-line comments and how they can be used to produce documentation as well as remind ourselves of tasks that we need to do in the future. And I will also give you some guidelines for when and why you should write comments. So let's start with single line comments. To declare a single line comment, we can start a line with two forward slashes like this and here we could write something useful, for example, the entry point for our program. And when we run our code, Dart automatically ignores this line. Now, there is also a variant of this which uses a triple slash. So what's the difference between a double and a triple slash? As far as Dart is concerned, there is no difference because comments are not executed anyway. But when we use triple slashes, Dart uses this to generate documentation for our code. In fact, if we move our cursor to the main method, we can see that our comment has now been included in the documentation section. On the other hand, it's more common to use double slashes for writing other types of comments, such as todos or notes that are not meant to be part of the documentation. For example, here I could write double slash and then to do implement me to indicate that I need to write some code inside the main method. And because I've added a to-do, Dartpad is kind enough to remind me that this is an outstanding task. And just to show you how common comments can be, here is an example from the source code of the Flutter SDK. And as you can see, alongside the regular code, we can also find a lot of comments. And these are very useful for us as developers, so that we can learn how to use this code correctly. And by the way, modern code editors can use comments to show us rich documentation for the APIs that we are using. Okay, so we now know how to write simple comments and alongside documentation, we can also use them to temporarily comment out some code so that it doesn't execute at runtime. For example, here we have a simple program and this print statement won't be executed because it's commented out. And here is another comment that we can use to remind ourselves about things that we need to do in the future. By the way, alongside single line comments, we also have multi line comments, which can be used when we need to write bigger blocks of text. We can start a multi line comment with the slash star syntax like this, and we can close a multi line comment with a star slash syntax like this. And then we can put our multi line content inside it like this. Okay, so we have seen how to write single and multi-line comments and the syntax for doing this in Dart is the same as in many other languages. But maybe what is more interesting is when should we write comments and why? Well, this is a topic that is often debated in the programming community and different amounts of comments may be necessary depending on whether you're writing a program or an app or maybe some open source code that should be used by others. So all I can do is to give you my personal opinion. And that is that you should write comments to explain why you're writing code in a specific way if this is not clear enough from the context. 
Instead, you should not write comments to explain what the code does, because this should be clear by reading the code itself. And if it's not, then you should improve your code. And one way to do this is to choose variable names that describe well what they represent. Like in this example, where I've named this API version variable like this which is much clearer than using a very generic name like X. Okay, so let's get back on track and continue on the next lesson. This is the last lesson on this section about the basics of the Dart language. And the goal of this section was to understand how to write simple Dart programs while learning some fundamental concepts, such as variables and basic types, the difference between initialization and assignment, as well as working with strings and numeric types and the various operators that are available in Dart. And I'd like to wrap up this section by talking about the difference between statements and expressions. And up until now, we have been using a combination of statements and expressions in our programs. So what exactly is an expression? Well, each of the integer literals that you see here are expressions. And by combining them together, we also get an expression that can be assigned to a variable. On the other hand, this entire line is a statement. And another example of statement is print x. So all this does is to print this variable to console. But we can't really assign this to a variable like this, because this statement in itself has no value. So the main difference between the two is that expressions hold a value at runtime, so they can be combined with other expressions and assigned to a variable. On the other hand, statements can contain expressions, but they do not hold a value. And for this reason, they cannot be used as an expression. Now, there are languages where statements are expressions, but Dart is not one of those languages. So this distinction may seem a bit theoretical, but I think it helps us reason about what we can and cannot do in Dart programs. And I will refer again to statements and expressions as we make progress. For now, I invite you to play a bit with different programs and see what can be interpreted as an expression in Dart. Okay, so this completes this section, but we are just getting started. So let's continue on the next one. This is the end of the second chapter. As a reminder, you can buy the full course on Udemy and get access to all the premium content that will not be included here on YouTube. So type this URL in your browser to buy my full course for a discounted price. Thank you very much for watching. And if you found this useful, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.